On the outer edge of Adelaide's central business district stands the heritage landmark known as the Old Adelaide Jail. Built in 1841, the jail saw around 300,000 prisoners pass through its doors during its 147 years as a functioning prison. Some of those never left, meeting their death at the end of a hangman's noose and buried within the prison's walls. Along with Government House, Adelaide Jail is one of South Australia's two oldest remaining public buildings. Its design was began by George Strickland Kingston in 1840, but due to its exceeding cost, building was not completed until long after its opening in 1841. In 1871, the Remand Center cells were added, followed by the construction of the new building in 1879 thanks to a prison labor workforce. New cells were added to the dormitory area above the South Laneway in 1880. Gallows were installed in the A-Wing section of the new building in 1886, followed by the conversion of the West Tower from a storage building to what is today referred to as the Hanging Tower in 1953. The new building gallows were used for 21 executions in total, while the hanging tower claimed four lives. Many other renovations and additions followed, leading up to the jail's closure in 1988. The last execution performed within the Adelaide Jail took place on the 24th of November, 1964, but prior to that, 43 other executions were carried out on prison grounds none more famous than that of Elizabeth Lillian Wolcock, the only woman ever executed in the state of South Australia. Abandoned by her mother at the age of four, Elizabeth suffered a cruel upbringing. Her life did not improve following her marriage to the demanding and abusive Thomas Wolcock in 1867. Thomas died in September of 1873 from an illness that was quickly identified as mercury poisoning. Elizabeth was put on trial for the murder of her husband, and due to damning medical evidence and character testimonies, she was found guilty. Two weeks prior to her execution, she confirmed the ruling with a rambling confession, which provided a deep insight into her tragic life and the abuse that led her to resort to murder in her most desperate hour. She was executed on the 30th of December, 1873, and buried within the prison grounds. Her grave is still tended on a regular basis by historians and strangers sympathetic to her harsh and tragic story. She is believed to be one of the jail's most active spirits, having been cited many times by guests and investigators, predominantly around the cage cells of Yard 2, which served as the prison's women's division from 1849 to 1969. We first investigated the Adelaide Jail in March of 2016. During that investigation, we captured our first ever truly unexplainable photographic evidence a few meters in front of Elizabeth Wilcox's cell in Yard 2. Following this, we received interesting potential spirit communication using the spirit box and ovulus in a pottery room connected to Yard 2. We felt it would be a good idea to revisit this area early on in our return investigation. It was a wise decision. After setting up the spirit box and voice recorder, we asked any spirits present to come forward and communicate by making a sound to show their presence. Within minutes, we heard two clear knocks coming from the wall cabinet to my right. Unfortunately, the unexplained knocks were not captured on the voice recorder, but following my question asking if the sound was produced by a spirit, we did capture a female voice clearly saying the name Michael. The voice sounds as though it may have come from further back in the room, but we cannot say conclusively whether or not the voice came through the spirit box or from thin air itself. All we can say is that neither Wendy or myself heard it at the time of the recording. Did you hear that? Is that you? Is that... Did you do that again? Did you do that again? Our next 
stop with one of two reinforced double-doored cells at the far end of the new building's A-wing section. Overlooked by A-wing's gallows on the upper floor, these two cells are known as the lunatic cells for their secondary reinforced doors designed to block the screams of unruly inmates. In our first investigation, we spent time in both of these cells. This time, our focus was on the left cell only. There is a particular ghost story attached to the left side cell, dating back to its days as a functioning jail cell. With more than one prisoner claiming to have seen the apparition of a man walking through the wall from the outside and continuing straight across through the wall to the next cell, it is claimed that in each account the description of the man matches that of an executed prisoner buried along the outside wall of that cell. In our first stakeout of this cell, we placed a REM pod against the wall to the outside, and several minutes in, to our surprise, the pod did alarm. In this investigation, we were armed only with our own equipment, and sadly we do not yet possess a REM pod of our own. So instead, we conducted the same experiment with a K2 EMF detector. We left the camera filming the K2 for about 30 minutes while we conducted EVP and spirit box sessions. We were under the belief that the K2 had not shown any activity due to the fact that we had both been keeping an eye out for any extra flashes of light. However, upon reviewing our footage, we were pleased to find one quick EMF spike at around 12 minutes and 30 seconds in. Again, we cannot say conclusively that this electromagnetic spike is the result of spirit activity, but it is interesting and unusual. Our final piece of evidence was captured by Wendy in the museum hall, while I spent time in a remand center cell reputed to have had a very unusual light anomaly witnessed by several inmates. Wendy spent some time exploring the Hanging Tower and the Museum Hall. Often overlooked, the museum area itself is not known to be active. However, with so many original artifacts housed here, the potential for residual energy attachment is very high. And this is exactly what we believe we captured during Wendy's EVP session in the Museum Hall. Was the shout captured on our voice recorder an imprint of emotional energy embedded in the aging whipping rack or something else? We can say for certain that at the time of this recording, the museum and the areas surrounding the museum were completely silent. If any living person had been responsible for the shouting sound, it would not have gone unnoticed. Therefore, we are convinced we have captured something truly paranormal. Beyond that, all we can do is theorize. That may be all we have for this episode, but as far as the jail is concerned, we are far from done. I foresee many more returns yielding much more evidence, and each time we leave, I hope it is with more questions than answers, because without mystery, investigation has no purpose. As always, we encourage any South Australian locals or any traveling investigators who may be watching to visit our state's landmark paranormal hotspots for yourself. Locations like the Adelaide Jail rely on local and tourist interest to continue operating, so all visitors contribute greatly to the survival of these historically important locations. Thank you for watching. If you're interested, you can check out our previous episodes available on our channel, and I hope that you will join me again soon for episode number five.